Monmouth University goes on alert after a campus threat. The records of JFK's assassination are released and new update gives Amazon access to your home. All this and more on this special Halloween episode of Hawk TV News. Hello and welcome to Hawk TV News. I'm Arielli Batista. And I'm Vincent Caranta. Monmouth University brought the terror and fright this Halloween season. We go to Hania Sarsa with a special look into the Wilson Haunted House event. We are here at the Wilson Hall Haunted Tour, hosted by the Student Activities Board and MU players who dress up in their scariest costumes to frighten MU students. Let's go check it out. I'm excited for Halloween. Normally I'm not, but this year everybody really seems to be hyped up. Everybody seems to be really energetic about it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm excited for it. It'll be good. I'm part of Mammoth Players and I love doing makeup and the whole sci-fi makeup. So I was playing with a lot of latex and I love practicing on myself for Halloween. So I figured I'd try and do it with other people and it's always super fun to see everybody's reaction once you put all the blood on them and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So I, I was really looking forward to joining this event. I think probably the girl that was asking us to play with her, I didn't want to play yeah. with her. <laughs> there was no need. I left her. I'm like, sorry, no. <laughs> Their help from the MU players is tremendous. Um, there are some seriously great actors. Um, the people playing Mr. and Mrs. Parsons are phenomenal. They are able to add such like a creative um, component to what we do as event planners. Well, it seems like the students had a great time at the Haunted House and definitely got them into the Halloween spirit. Until next time, I'm Hania Sarsar for Hawk TV News. On October 26th, a suspicious character was reported to the Monmouth University Police Department. It was rumored that a strange man was walking around campus looking for a large population of students. The student he interacted with felt threatened and called authorities. Monmouth University Police reported that they received information of the possible threat. The matter was investigated and there was no confirmation of a danger. Campus resumed under normal operations that night. October 29th marked the five-year anniversary of Hurricane Sandy, which killed 40 people and caused billions of dollars in damage to the state of New Jersey. A recent poll conducted by Monmouth University revealed that Superstorm Sandy victims are still dissatisfied with relief efforts. Out of the 432 devastated by the storm attack in 2012, 55% reported feeling dissatisfied. On another note, only 13% of those victims are requesting assistance to pay their mortgage. The National Arch Archives will release 2,800 records related to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. In accordance to the 1992 law mandating that the records be released, however, 300 of those files will be kept secret due to concern for U.S. national security. Due to the withheld documents conspiracy, ter terrorists are suggesting the government is covering up the truth behind Kennedy's assassination. Amazon has a new system called the Amazon Key. When a delivery person arrives with a package, they scan a barcode that sends a request to the Amazon Cloud. If the cloud grants permission, the delivery person receives a message on their app to swipe their screen, which unlocks the door. The customer is notified, and that gets recorded on Amazon's Cloud Cam, a home security camera. After delivering the package, the door relocks with a swipe. Amazon sells a bundle for about $250, which includes a smart lock, cloud cam, and free installation. Amazon Key hopes to expand service soon beyond their 37 American cities. How would you feel if you looked into a mirror, but you could not see your reflection unless you smiled? Well, this concept may seem silly, but it was invented by Burke Ilhan to raise the spirits of cancer patients. It looks like a tablet with a built-in camera and an opaque system with facial recognition technology that becomes reflective when it recognizes a smile. Ilhan is currently producing hit the smile mirror and there is limited quantity, with each costing around two to two to three hundred dollars. His goal is to bring the cost down and donate many mirrors to hospitals treating patients with cancer. We have to take a short break, but stay tuned for more Hawk TV news.
TV news and we've got it covered. This is Hawk TV news. This is Hawk TV news and we've got it covered. It's time to join forces, get energized, and fuel up right. Because starting today, every kid in America has a mission. hero in you. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. The first movie that puts you in the action. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. Modern Entertainment recently announced that Upstate New York will be home to a new Legoland in 2020. The new theme park will be located 66 miles from New York City and will cost around 500 million to create. The planning board for the town of Goshen un anonymously voted to move forward with the park and also granted Merlin with all the permits they need to start construction. The new park is expected to attract around 1.5 to 2.5 million visitors annually and will bring in many jobs to the county. With an update on Tiger Woods and his charges, we go to my co-anchor. Tiger Woods pleads guilty after being arrested for a DUI to avoid going to jail. The former golfer was found in Jupiter, Florida last spring asleep behind the wheel of his Mercedes Benz. At the time of his arrest, Woods had five different drugs in his system, including prescription drugs and marijuana. Luckily for him, Palm Beach County has allowed first-time DUI offenders to enter to enter a diversion program which will prevent them from losing their license and possible jail time. As a part of his plea deal, Woods will have to attend a DUI education program. He is not allowed to consume alcohol and is required to take regular drug tests. He will need to perform 50 hours of community service and attend a workshop where victims of impaired drivers will discuss how the lives of their loved ones were lost. He will need to pay a fine of $250 within six months in addition to court costs and a donation of $250 to Palm Beach County Victim Services. If he does this with no violations, his reckless driving charges will be expunged from his record. If he violates this probation, he, will, he could face a 90-day jail sentence and a, and a fine up to $500. Tiger Woods is being treated as a regular citizen in Palm Beach County, said prosecutor Carissa Cranks. Let's hope Woods stays out of trouble during his probation. That's all from me today. Back to you guys at the desk. The Grammy Museum experience is finally open to the public at Newark's Prudential Center Arena. The museum features memorable 
Butler from many New Jersey natives such as Bruce Springsteen, Whitney Houston, and Frank Sinatra. In an effort to continue the revitalization of Newark's downtown, the museum was put in a place with a great musical legacy and offers interactive exhibits. Some of the outfits worn by Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and Madonna from past Grammys will be put on display. And programs for students will be offered, such as getting the chance to meet artists and attend sound checks. With a look at some exciting new television shows, we go to Michael Orlando. Hey guys, so today we're here to talk, going to talk about new and old TV shows that have been aired this fall. Warning, there will be spoilers. The first we're going to go and talk about is the Fox new TV show, The Gifted. The Gifted follows a family who lives in a society where average people discover they have superpowers. When a family finds out that their two kids have powers, their world is thrown into a spiral as the government chases them down due to the possible dangers that these mutants can cause to society. Now, another show that has come back this fall and is one of my personal favorites is Arrow. This season, we come back to the Arrow team at Star City after the explosion on Lian Yu. The team suffers some casualties, such as the death of William's mother, the comatose of Oliver's sister, Thea, and the nerve damage that Oliver's closest friend, John Diggle, is currently suffering from. Oliver is now taking care of his grief-stricken son in the aftermath of the explosion, in which he has passed down the mantle of the Green Arrow to John Diggle. We don't know how long this may last, but it is clear that keeping his son, William, safe and being an active mayor of Star City are Oliver's top priorities. Lastly, a show that has come back and has certainly not disappointed is The Flash. We last left off the show with Barry Allen, AKA The Flash, running into the Speed Force to save Central City. The show continues off in which it has been six months since Barry has disappeared. Barry's best friend, Cisco Ramon, also known as Vibe, has been working on ways to open a portal to save Barry. However, when Iris, Barry's fiance, finds out about Cisco's project, she isn't too happy with it, but she comes around when it works and Barry is free and reunited with her. Initially, Barry comes out of the Speed Force with a scattered mind. However, later within the episode, when Iris is in danger, Barry snaps out of it and it saves the day. Well, that's it for me with your TV update. Now back to you guys at the desk. Four American soldiers were killed in Niger on October 4th. Chloe Angelini offers her perspective on the controversy that followed. So many things in today's society have been politicized. I believe it is becoming increasingly difficult to present differing points of view without parties becoming enraged and dismissive. However, everyone in America should agree upon this basic point, that respect should be given to the members of our military who are killed defending our freedom. This topic recently became the center of controversy after militants tied to the Islamic State killed four U.S. soldiers during the ambush in Niger. The ensuing controversy resulted when a political fight erupted between President Trump and a Florida Congresswoman. Staff Sergeant Brian Black, Sergeant Le David Johnson, Staff Sergeant J Dustin Wright, and Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson were the four soldiers killed in the attack. While President Trump was fulfilling his duty to contact the families of our fallen warriors to express gratitude for their ultimate sacrifice, Florida Congresswoman Federica Wilson was listening to a conversation between the President and Le David Johnson's widow. Representative Wilson was offended by the President's choice of language and then politicized her take on the conversation to publicly criticize the President and his staff. A war of words played out between Trump and Wilson through news and social media in the days that followed. Chief of Staff John Kelly, who is a Gold Star parent himself, spoke at a press conference explaining what it meant what it means for a soldier to give the ultimate sacrifice and how the family and friends they leave behind respect and mourn their loved ones. Kelly eloquently explained what every Gold Star family experiences with accuracy, respect, and emotion. In my opinion, our world is a very cynical place and some events should be exempt from the drama of the political arena. These soldiers should be honored and their families should have our gratitude and prayers. They should also be insulated from those who attempt to use their loss for political gain. Staff Sergeant Black, Sergeant Johnson, Staff Sergeant Wright, and Staff Sergeant Johnson, thank you for your service in making the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedom. This grateful commentator salutes you. Back to you at the desk. We have to take a short break, but when we return, we will have the latest in technology and entertainment. Stay tuned for more Hawk TV news.
The Extra Point is Hawk TV's only sports show, and what I love about The Extra Point is that it allows people to really come on and talk about what they're passionate in, and that's sports. When I first got here, I didn't really know what to expect. It was really a fun time. This is the most fun I've had in college so far. It's really not as competitive as people will think it is. I've been on air for almost every episode of Extra Point. Unscripted debate is probably the best format for sports shows today, and I think that's what's growing. So more than anything else, The Extra Point just provides people to come on Hawk TV and talk about what they love, and that's sports. Tony Lynn, what's it like being a producer? It's so much fun, especially when I get to work with Matt. You put in a lot of work, trying to get your moves right. You want to make the, the show look as smooth as possible. You don't want choppy zooms in and out. You want to make it look like the camera's not even there. This is my first time at the extra point. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm coming back now. They've got me hooked. I control this switcher right here, and I pretty much make the, uh, what the director says happen. This is the moment, tonight is the move. Slowly zoom out, and fade to black. Gorgeous. That is how it's done. We make big TV here. We practice, we execute, we get paid. That's, Nick, that's all right. I throw a couple Sorry, of 15 Jake, second PSAs in there, and we're You're good. Done. Yeah. You're done. On November 1st, Monmouth University will host its annual Fall Career Day. Students are often at loss when it comes to professional attire. With help for your next job or internship interview, we go to Alyssa Wilson for another edition of Dressing the Part. We are all in college, not just for fun, but in order to pursue our goals and land our dream jobs. Now, I am sure that some of us have our LinkedIn accounts on all-star status and our resumes ready for review, but a key component is dressing properly for an interview or career fair. This week, I'm going to handle the ladies, but don't worry, gentlemen, my critiques will be coming your way soon. Please remember that it is very important to dress for the job you want and not the job you have. Although the person interviewing you probably won't be staring at your feet, it is important to wear professional shoes. Ballet flats are always appropriate, and so are moderate heels that go up to about three to four inches. You are not going to a club, so save the six inch heels for later. A blazer will take you a long way and will instantly make you look more professional. When it comes to your attire, do not be afraid to add a pop of color, and the interviewer is more inclined to remember the person in the peach blazer opposed to the seven candidates in the black blazers. Trends are constantly changing, and all black everything just isn't the trend anymore. Most stores that sell business attire like New York and Company have altered the style of the career pant. It is no longer the loose look that it was in the past. The modern woman's career pant is slim and resembles that fit of a skinny jean. This is appropriate as long as you are actually not wearing jeans and your pants match your outfit. I get it, bad hair days happen, but the night before the interview is not the day you should decide to not do your hair. If you are having a bad hair day though, try a sleek ponytail for a last minute but professional look. It is very important that you do not walk into the interview with a face that resembles Bozo, Pennywise, or any other famous clowns. Too much makeup can turn an employer off. Try subtle tones of makeup that look natural. Here are just some last minute tips to help you succeed. I think it goes without saying that you must iron or steam your clothes for the interview. If it is early in the morning, make sure that you prepare everything at night so that you are not stressed or flustered the morning of. Make sure you wear clothes that fit appropriately and that you are comfortable in. If you are self-conscious because your pants are too tight, chances are you're not going to perform as you would when your confidence is high. And last, make sure that your self-grooming is unmatched. Have fresh breath to accompany your eager smile, and you'll walk away leaving a lasting impression. That's all for this edition of Dressing the Part. I wish you all the best at the career fair. Back to you guys at the desk. Netflix's original hit show, Stranger Things, has officially returned for its second season. One of the show's stars, Charlie Heaton, was recently denied entrance into the United States due to possession of cocaine. The 23-year-old British actor was on his way to Los Angeles from his home in London when drug-sniffing dogs detected the substance. The young actor was not arrested, but placed back on a plane to London. On November 16th, Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai plans to request that the agency remove regulations regarding media consolidation. The move will roll back limits on cross-ownership of newspapers and television stations in the same media markets. Pai states that rising 
competition from sites such as Facebook and Google for advertising lead to this move. According to the National Association of Broadcasters, it will remove outdated regulations that needlessly hurt local broadcast stations. His move has been criticized by the advocacy group Free Press, which claims that decades of media consolidation has harmed independent voices and local news. We have to take another short break, but when we return, Alexis Jennings has an exciting recap of Monmouth Sports. After school today, I will be dead. I can't go on any longer. Nobody even knows I exist. They pass through me like air, like nothingness. That's what I am, nothing. Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 88. I'm Jamie McMurray and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. The first day stepping on the court, I couldn't keep up. That motivated me to step up my game. When I reach a goal, I set a new one the next day. And my next goal is to go to college. Mastering the court takes persistence. So does getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. I look up to a lot of the older heads, you know, the, the innovators, the heads of the art movements of the past. They kept it really edgy and like a lot of the Latin American muralists and Latin American artists and um, their styles were very unique and new to their time. You know, somewhat controversial, but that's who I look up to mainly. Personally, I'm very excited about going to college. It's something new and it's something different than what I'm used to. I'm definitely gonna be a little out of my element, but um, that's what makes it so exciting is that, you know, it's something fresh. Well, there's so many opportunities that I think I could miss out on if I didn't go, you know? Getting into college takes planning and vision. You know, it's just like when I take a brick wall and turn it into a canvas for my art. Paintings help me realize that I've got what it takes. Hey guys, let's take a look at what your Hawks have been up to. The women's soccer team defeated Niagara 1-0 in the quarterfinal round of the 2017 MAC tournament in Florida. The game was scoreless until the 84th minute 
where junior Jaslyn Moya sent the ball across the penalty area and redshirt sophomore Maddie Gibbon, excuse me, Gibson finished the play to score the only goal in the game. Mammoth outshot Niagara 17 to 3 in the victory. Sophomore goalie Amanda Knob recorded her 11th shutout of the season which she, while she leads the conference. The Hawks improved their record to 13-3-2 on the season and will face Siena in the semifinals of the 2017 MAC tournament. The football team topped Charleston, excuse me, Charleston Southern by a score of 23-20. The Hawks scored first, the first 23 points of the game, which included two touchdowns on the ground, a, a pick six, and a field goal. Charleston Southern mounted a comeback in the second half, scoring 20 straight points to make it a one-possession game. The Monmouth defense clamped down when it needed to, and it sealed the team's fifth straight victory. The Hawks are now 7-1 on the year and sporting a 2-0 Big Conference record. Excuse me, Big South Conference record. They hope to continue their success as they return home to play Presbyterian in their next game. The field hockey team defeated Ryder 5-0 on Senior Day. The Hawks scored four of their five goals on set corner plays. Junior Kelly Hanna and a hand in a a hand in all five score excuse me hit, had a hand in all of the five goals scored and assisted on three of them. Senior Julie Lasso scored two and freshman Tamar Kil Klinkhammer added one. Senior goalie Christine Persanti earned her 15th career win and recorded her 18th shutout in the in her career. With the victory, the team clinched their fourth straight MAC regular season title and will hold their two will host the 2017. MAC tournament. Mammoth finished the regular season with a 14 and 3 record, 5 and 1 in MAC play, and they will host Ryder in the semifinals of the MAC tournament. The men's soccer team edged Quinnipiac 1 to nothing on the team's senior night. Junior Luke Bromley scored the only goal in the game in the 71st minute as they headed home to the corner as a head as he headed home a corner kick from senior Jake Armin. Senior goal senior goalkeeper Chris Se Seeger earned his first career win making two saves in his first start of the season. Monmouth improved their record to 6-9-2 on the season and 3-5-1 and one in MAC play. Despite winning, the Hawks were eliminated from postseason contention as Iona drew with Canisius. The team will play Niagara in the 27th, 2017 season finale. Well, that's all we have for you today in sports. Stay with, to stay up to date on your latest in sports, tune in to The Extra Point right here on Hawk TV News. Back to you guys at the desk. That's all for this week of Hawk TV News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Vincent Caranta. And I'm Adieli Batista. Be sure to tune in next time for another edition of Hawk TV News.